So today, we'll be taking a look at setting up the Avaya Communicator for IP Office, which is one of the soft phone applications offered by Avaya. In this ever-changing business environment, flexibility is the key, and soft phones allow you to have the functions of your commercial phone system on your mobile device or desktop. In future videos, we'll be exploring other soft phone options, but today, it's all about the Avaya Communicator. We're going to need a few things, though, before we get started. The Avaya Communicator application itself, your IP office identity certificate, and to make it all work, those dreaded licenses, either the remote worker or power user license. Let's get started. Guys, so first I'm going to jump over to avaya.com, support.avaya.com. Once we're on the website, uh, we're going to jump over to support downloads. This is where we're going to grab the communicator application. Let me just put IPO, select your version. And from that list, uh, you're going to select general availability, general availability gonna scroll down and grab that application and that's gonna be Avaya Communicator. The version on yours might be a little bit different but this is the one that we're gonna be downloading for the release 11. We're gonna have our pop-ups, let's close, download. Now I'm already logged in under my user my username, my credentials, but you're, if you weren't logged in, you're gonna get a login screen where you're gonna have to show your uh, login with your credentials. Sorry, allow. And then we're gonna save. this and then after we do that we're gonna hop over to the system which is the IP office and we're gonna grab the certificate the identity certificate so again the IP addresses might differ for you but mine will be 192.168.1.1 You're going to jump over and you're going to log into the web manager. Log in with your administrator account. Now, if you're not never logged in, this is your same credentials that you would be using on uh, a manager to log in. That's, there's no difference and we'll be doing that in, in, in a bit. So we're going to jump over where you see security manager certificates. From there, now you're going to see some certificates listed here and you might think it's going to be one of these certificates. You know, a lot of people might make the mistake and they'll download the SIP uh, product certificate authority, but that's not the certificate here you'll be downloading. Remember, it's the identity certificate. So it's going to be this guy up up top here. So the way that you export that is you just click export, select yes, and you hit save. So now, so now since we, we've got the download, it's going to minimize that. I've downloaded them to my desktop, but so this is the communicator, and this is the certificate. Now, yours obviously probably will be downloaded to a different location, wherever they are. You can make the adjustments that we're going to make uh, before moving ahead. Now, if you notice, the certificate, when it's downloaded, it has a PEM uh, file, file type. We 
we're going to be changing that because um, in order to run and in install the certificate, we're going to have to change that to CRT. And once you make that adjustment, you'll see the magic happens, right? It has a little, little certificate with a seal. So the first thing we're going to do before installing the application is that we're going to load that certificate in our trusted certificate store. So that's simple. I'm just going to double click on that. All right. And just dragging these over from the other screen so you guys can see it. So you'll get the, the option to, to complete the installation. Click install. You're going to select it for a local machine. And you're going to automatically, you're not, you're, it's going to be on automatic, but you're not going to select that. You're going to go down to place all certificates in the following store. You're going to hit browse. I'm going to make sure that it's not on personal, we're going to be putting it in the trusted root certificate authorities. Click OK, hit next, finish, and there you go. The import was successful, you hit OK, hit OK on that, and then we can go ahead and run uh, the installer for the Avaya communicator. Now if you didn't do this, this uh, part where you're, you're, you're installing the certificate, you will get an, an error when you try to install and run the application because it's going to be looking for that certificate to authenticate and it's not it's not going to see it so before we do the installation of uh, the communicator application we're going to confirm that there are a few things set correctly within the system and again, you're going to log in with your admin credentials. Okay, so under the system tab, you're going to make sure you hop over to LAN 1 or LAN 2, depending on what uh, interface your, your device is communicated, com communicating on on the network. Mine will be LAN 1. You can jump over to your VoIP tab. You're going to confirm that you have SIP trunk enabled, SIP registrar enabled, and you have the IP address of your domain name and you can use the IP address for the SIP FQDN although it's not a fully qualified domain name it, w it will work when you're using it the application internally now if you're using the app you plan to use the application externally well, as a remote user you're actually going to need to get a fully qualified domain, um, domain name and enter that there but for our purposes, you could just leave it with the IP address. And then below this, you're just going to make a note of these ports. These are all the default. You can change them. Uh, but you're going to make note of those, those ports and confirm that all three have a little checkbox, therefore enabled. The IP office will be listening on those ports for communication. So you want to make sure that those are checked. Um, once that's done, you're going to jump over to the Users tab. Now in the Users tab, you just want to make sure that whoever you're giving the right to use the soft phone application has the appropriate license assigned to them. So you're going to jump over to the user. First, give them a password. So you need to enter a password in the password field. And as well as making sure that they have a power user license or a mobile user license assigned to them. It will not work if you are on basic, no license or office worker, right? 
need to be one of these two guys. So once you select the power users, and again, this is where your, your, your license is coming into play. You have to make sure that you have the license available. If not, to purchase them from Avaya and uh, apply them to the system before you can move forward. Uh, enable, saw phone has to be checked. And if you're using 1X portal for communication, meaning the instant messaging, the uh, presence uh, function, you're going to need that to be checked as well. All right. So as long as those uh, settings are there, you click OK, save that to the system, and you're all set for the next step. I'm going to close this out, move ahead with the installation. So once you uh, double click on the tab, it'll walk you through the process. You just accept. That, that's the default location. If you're going to install it somewhere else, you can browse and change that. I'm not. Select next install. Now again, if you guys haven't subscribed, this is your time to subscribe to the channel. Your one-stop shop for everything, communication, telephones, data, anything you can think of on your network that you want us to take care of, you give us a call. I'm not speeding this up. This will give you an idea of how long it actually takes to install the application. You can click finish, and you can check, leave that box check where it says launch uh, the application after finish. Okay, so it's open at the bottom. I'm gonna bring just drag that over from the other screen. I don't know why it keeps going over there, but now this is how it, the application is gonna look before you log in. So before you actually log in, what you should do is jump over to settings. So it's gonna be the little line on the top, right? So you select that, jump over to settings. You're gonna make sure that your IP office IP address is there. All right. Again, mine is 192.168.1.100, but yours may be different. Again, this is where the port comes into play. Here goes your, your port information. That's why you need to document what port uh, the IP office is listening on. Because again, this, may, this is the default, but it can always be adjusted. Transport type, you're going to select whether that is TLS or TCP. We're using TLS because uh, we want that additional layer of, uh, layer of security. This is what tells the IP office to check for this certificate. Uh, so it's not going to run on TLS or will not operate at all if someone else is trying to get access to your system, install this application, and they don't have that certificate, it won't work. So that's why best practice is to have that uh, set to TLS. Here goes your domain. Just use that IP address. The present server, this is where your 1x application is running. Again, this is not needed for uh, communicator to work, but uh, if you want to use the presence to know, you know, basically know if someone is available or they're busy, do not disturb. If you want to send instant messages, you're gonna need you're gonna need that to be running. Okay. Again, like it's, it's it's not necessary, but if you want those additional features, that's what you're gonna need to make sure it's there. All right. And that's uh, that's typically where your voicemail uh, pro server is running. If you're not if you're not familiar with that. So once you hit OK, you're gonna hop over to login and to that extension. And once you enter that extension, you're going to enter your password. Now, if I can remember my password, I think it's, I forgot. I might have to hop back in and change. OK, so I remember the password. So now we're logged in. So we, where it says no present server, 
as you could see, that's, that's changed to available. So if I wanted to, to tell my coworkers that I'm unavailable, I'll just click on this. I could check to, to busy, unavailable, offline, and here's where you would log out as well. So we're not gonna walk through all the features. Um, I'm gonna say that for another video, but now we're logged in. I'm just gonna make a quick call so that you can test and see that you know it's working. All right, no one picked up. go calling no one is gonna pick up it's gonna go to voicemail but that's just to show you the interface and again we'll make another video uh, actually walking through all the functions leave your comments at the bottom anything that we didn't cover that you want us to take care of uh, just let us know and we'll drop that video 